Hey everybody, blessed to you. This is Pastor Ben here. This is day three of five days of Hanukkah miracles. I'm excited. I'm glad you're here with me. Amen. Uh, in a few minutes, I'm going to start the teaching of the day. This is day three. Someone say day three. Remember, Hanukkah is <clears throat> a supernatural time. Excuse me. It's a supernatural time where uh, God gave victory to the Jewish people. And it's a time where one day's worth of oil multiplied into eight days. Amen. So this is a very powerful uh, time. This is also uh, the last uh, feast before we enter into the new Gregorian year calendar in 2021. So I want to invite you all. Uh, praise God. Blessings. Some hearts, likes. How you doing? What's up? What's going on? Blessings to you, Marina. There's a wee bit of snow up there. Hey there, Amanda. Blessings. Carmela. Blessings. Well, praise God. I'm, I'm going to go into the word, the teaching of the day. This is day three of five days of Hanukkah miracles. Amen. And uh, just to give a quick recap, uh, of course, Hanukkah is an eight-day uh, long feast okay it's an eight day long feast um, and really the story of Hanukkah is in the center of a three year long battle that the Jews or the Maccabees had took place uh, against the Hasmoneans the Seleucid army the greatest military force on earth and um, <clears throat> and Hanukkah is an eight day feast of course uh, I felt to do five days of Hanukkah miracles uh, challenge instead of eight days long. Uh, of course, I've been celebrating Hanukkah for you know even before it started. Uh, but then uh, uh, you know some people said, Pastor Van Hanukkah is eight days. Why are you doing five days? Because you know uh, I felt to do five days, and also because um, as Hanukkah progresses throughout the days, as the days continue on, the glory increases, the power increases. Amen. So this is day three of our five days of Hanukkah Miracle Challenge, and I'm believing, expecting for miracles, signs, and wonders in your life. Amen? Miracles, signs, and wonders. Uh, I don't know about you, but I've been experiencing blessings. I've been experiencing uh, the power of God. Uh, the Holy Spirit has been favoring us, blessing us. So as the Lord has said, as He promised, we will end 2020 with a big bang. We will end this month, December, uh, with signs and wonders, and December is a month of miracles. Someone say miracles, amen. And uh, of course, right now, today, Wednesday, we actually stepped into uh, the new Hebrew month called Tevet. Okay, so Tevet is uh, the new Hebrew month, and I already released a short video on it, and I did talk about it uh, on Monday and even briefly yesterday, Tuesday. But Tevet is the month of the goodness of God. And it is a month where revelation continues to increase. So in this new Hebrew month of Tevet, the goodness of God is going to manifest in your life and overcome all evil, all corruption, all fraud. So are you ready for the goodness of God to be manifested? And as well, um, it's also the month where Esther took, took her place. Do we have any Esthers on this broadcast here? Uh, Tevet is the month where Esther took her place and she rose up before the king. She gained favor from the king and her petitions were heard and there was an overturning of every unjust law decree mandate ban order in the court so this is a month 
where the bold Esther, such as yourself, took her place. She gained favor with the king, and the decree was overturned. Amen. So uh, this is a wonderful new season, a wonderful new month uh, of Tibet here. And, um, uh, of course, right now, uh, we're on the third day of this five-day Hanukkah Miracles Challenge. Yesterday, uh, I talked to you uh, uh, about uh, the realm and the spirit of multiplication. And uh, you need to watch that because, remember, uh, one day's worth of oil multiplied supernaturally into eight days. Okay, imagine uh, you only have a whole gas tank uh, of petroleum uh, in your car. And you're driving, 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 except the Egyptians are chasing you down. You have a horde of people chasing you down, and, you know, they got guns, they got AKs, and, you know, so you're driving, and so it's a speed chase, and they're chasing you, and all of a sudden, your, your gas tank is about to hit empty. What would you do? If you're like me, uh, you probably freak out, you know, you probably start going uh, crazy. All right, but if you're like me, you probably start paying attention. You know, fire, fire, you know. You probably start declaring, you know, a supernatural increase. And all of a sudden, even though it's on empty, it shoots back up. Come on, somebody. It shoots back up to full. And I'm not talking about cheap 87. I'm talking about 91, 92 premium gasolina. Untala gasolina. It jumps back up. And you're like, whoa, what the heck? So that's the second day. And so they're chasing after you. Your enemies are chasing after you. And, you know, you're room, room, room. <clears throat> you're, you're going down. And all of a sudden, the third day, it's going back to low. And you're like, oh, Jesus, Shandaraba, I repent, Lord. I'm sorry, God. You know, I'll do anything to serve you, Lord. Help me, Jesus. And you start rambling on like most of us do, right? And all of a sudden... It just increases again. Imagine that happening for eight days until you fully outrun all your enemies. That happens eight days long until you outrun, overcome, defeat all of your enemies. I'm telling you, your enemies cannot chase you. Only blessings can chase you. All right, devils are not up to speed with you, okay? You will outrun their horses and their chariots. You will outrun the best of evil demon technology, you will outrun. Some say, I will outrun. Remember, Elijah outrun, outran the chariots of the king. You will outrun. That's the spirit of acceleration, okay? So yesterday I talked about the realm of multiplication. And remember, whatever you give to God, God will multiply. Whatever you give away, God will multiply. When you hold, hoard something back for yourself, like the parable of the talent where the, the servant held back one talent, you, it will not multiply, but if you want something to multiply in your life, there's a realm of overflow that you can tap into and step into in Jesus' name. And of course, on day one on Monday, I gave an introduction of Hanukkah and why this feast is so important. In fact, Jesus himself celebrated Hanukkah. You can see that in John 10, 22. Christ himself celebrated Hanukkah. But not only that, but he himself embodies Hanukkah. Because he is the festival of light. Amen? So uh, this is a very important time. Now today I want to talk about victory. Some say victory. I want to talk about uh, victory in Christ and the victorious mindset. Because there's way too many people that are struggling. Okay? Too many people stay stuck. Now, now I, I pity the fool. Okay? In the, in the words of, uh, what is that guy? The big guy. I pity the fool. Okay? I pity the fool. Okay? Because... Uh, I just don't understand how people can be so complacent and people can be stuck, okay? And unfortunately, a lot of people in the charismatic prophetic world were stuck in cycles, just like this this uh, wall thing, okay? We're stuck in cycles. We go around and around, the merry-go-round, no breakthrough, no fruit, no fire, no glory, no increase. It's always the same. It's stagnant. It's boring. You know, people are snoring. You know, uh, you're going to sleep like, you know. So people stay stuck, but, you know, uh, I'm, I'm always appalled at how people can accept a certain narrative for their life. I'm, I'm, I'm appalled by that. Instead of hungering and desiring for more, for greater, for breakthrough, for higher, for the greater things. I, I'm appalled by that. Shut up, Roska, Baba. But there's a lot of people <clears throat> who are stuck. 
in their spiritual life, in their prayer life, in their finances, uh, you know, relationships with people. But I want to tell you that God is about to unstuck you. I want to tell you that God is about to break you through. Amen. There's a power and exousia. There's, there's an empowerment and embodiment that wants to come in this moment, in this season of Hanukkah, that God wants to break you through. Let, let me ask you this, okay? You and I know, we already know that God wants to bless us. We already know that we have everything in Christ Jesus, yes? We, we have everything in Christ Jesus. So, if you're not being blessed, is it your fault? Or is it the devil's fault? Or is it God's fault? And unfortunately, we give too much power to the devil. We blame the devil so much instead of taking ownership. And instead of adjusting and changing things within ourselves. Listen, the devil is already under your feet. Stop blaming the devil. As long as you keep blaming the devil for your loss, for your lack of finances, for your lack of joy. As long as you keep blaming the devil, you will never get anywhere. You need to understand that Christ defeated the enemy. That the, every demon principality is already under your feet. And you need to live in that realm of the victorious life in Christ Jesus. You need to take ownership, okay? You need to, uh, you know, put your hands to the plow and go after uh, the greater glory. Go after the greatest things of God. And unfortunately, uh, many people uh, do not have a pursuit. Okay, someone said pursuit. The Bible says in the book of Corinthians, eagerly pursue or eagerly desire Eagerly pursue the greater spiritual gifts of God. Pursue, desire, okay? Listen, if you're hungry, like, you know, I wish I had some good breakfast, but, you know, I'm praying and getting ready for this broadcast. But if you're hungry, what do you do? If you're really, really hungry, like you're getting hangry, okay? You're getting hangry, okay? Imagine you're really hangry and, and you need some food, okay? Because your, your body's tripping, okay? Uh, your, your eyes are fluttering, your body's tripping, and you're like, ah, you're going crazy because you, you're hangry, you need some food. So what do you do? Are you just going to sit on the couch and just expect food to come? Are you just going to sit on the couch and, and expect your hunger to go away? No, if you want your hunger to be fed, you need to pick up the phone, call Postmates. You need to go out the door, drive to the restaurant. You need to do some. You need to have action, pursue, go after it for your hunger to be filled, for your hunger to be satisfied. Some of you are really hangry, hungry, angry with your life right now. You need to pursue. You need to step up, step out. And that's the story of Hanukkah. Hanukkah would not have happened. If it wasn't for one bold, righteous man. Come on, somebody. Hanukkah would not have happened if it wasn't for one bold, righteous man. And I want to tell you, Beth Moore. And I want to tell you, all of you so-called people who think using the terminology Christian nationalism now sounds intellectual. And now you sound very smart by saying Christian nationalism when you don't even really know what that means. And you don't even really know what that is. Because if you did, then you would love your country as God loves every country, every nation on earth. And even God takes pride in every nation. So, here's the thing. If, if President Trump didn't stand up and take a stand, where would we be right now? We'd probably have more corruption. We, we'd have more pedophilia. More human trafficking. Some of these, uh, you know, uh, ISIS, uh, Islamic, jihadist, terrorist leaders would still be continuing. We would be in a war right now. Everybody said that if President Trump goes uh, into office and we're going to have war. No, there's world peace right now. There's peace. We would, we would have, we probably have more deaths with COVID-19. Uh, <laughs> we'd have more homelessness, more joblessness, more people out of work. Uh, the Christian church would probably be in uh, an array right now. But it takes one righteous leader, one bold person to take a stand. And all of a sudden, everything begins to change. The story, the narrative changes. Imagine, imagine that. And imagine right now, 
if Martin Luther King Jr. did not take a stand, imagine where would we be with our civil rights movement? Where would we be in terms of racism and segregation? You know, I believe that America, the United States of America, is the least racist country on earth. It's, it's probably one of the least racist countries on earth. How so? Why? Well, uh, the United States ended slavery uh, way ahead of other westernized, civilized, colonized nations. The United States uh, uh, has, has been funding more African American and even migrants and minority people. Listen, so many minorities, you know, from other nations come to the United States for that reason. So how can you say the United States is racist? No, no, no. The United States has always been open to receiving minorities, migrants. That's the vision of the United States. People come to the U.S., to America, in the hopes of a better life. My parents did. So, uh, but if, if Martin Luther King Jr. didn't take a stand, where would we be right now? I'm talking to you today about the power of one. You are powerful. When you say no, when you say yes, there's an authority that comes. And unfortunately, we've had way too many yes men. We've had way too many tolerant Christians. We've had way too many greasy, gracy, cheap, sloppy, sleazy, gracy Christians. We, you know, where we don't address sin, we don't address the issues of the day. We don't confront the deception, the evil, wicked principalities, the vows of, of the century. But we'd rather be nice, church, play nice, instead of offending anybody. Because we want to be accepted and tolerant, and we want to be more presentable to the world, and be more accepted and be friends with all the Hollywood actors and all the Hollywood elitists. You sell out. So... The power of one, as the Jews were under tyranny, under the Seleucids, under the Hasmoneans, as the Jews were being forced uh, to worship their idols, as the Jews were being forced to uh, do unclean things, ceremonially unclean things, things that were against their religion, against their faith in God, against their culture, they were being converted to, uh, you know, uh, idolatry being converted to duality, being converted to, uh, you know, do certain things that was against their nature. The temple of God, the most holy sacred place, was desecrated with pig's blood, with pig sacrifice, unclean animals, unclean idols. And as this was happening for years, one man named Mati Iyahu, some say Mati Iyahu, One name, man named Mati Yahu, he stood up and he said, enough is enough. I'm going to take a stand. And I'm not going to do what you are trying to force and manipulate me to do. Wear masks, socially distance, shut down my business. I'm not going to do that. One man named Mati Yahu stood up against uh, Antiochus, the Seleucid king. And all of a sudden, a whole revolution began. A whole rebellion took forth. All right. Right as one man stood up, a whole group of people called the Maccabees rose up together. And the Maccabees together, now they entered into a three-year war. And in the three-year war, of course, there was an eight-day window where the oil supernaturally manifested until that battle was over and they won. That's called Hanukkah within the three-year war, but it was all started because one man named Mati Yahu stood up in boldness, in courage, in the spirit of Joshua, in the spirit of the Mashiach, and he stood up, and a whole revolution began. Today I'm talking to you about victory. Someone say victory. I'm talking to you about victory because in order to have victory, there needs to be a challenge. If you want to become victorious, you need to have a challenge. You need to have a battle. Okay? You, you need to overcome something. How are you going to be victorious? 
How are you going to be a winner if there's no game, if there's no challenge, there's no competition, okay? That's why for me, I, I'm, I'm a pretty competitive person, okay? Uh, even at the age of 29, I'll be 30 in February, 30 uh, in a few months. But even at the age of 29, I, I'm quite a competitive person. I, 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 I don't live by ambitions, but I live by the spirit because I know that we are in a war. I know that we are in a battle for souls. We are in a, we are in a battle uh, for the future of this nation and for our children. So, but then how can you be a winner if there's no battle? How can you be a winner if there's no test? If there's no contest, okay, listen, we're, we're not a tolerant, liberal, left agenda people, okay, where everybody gets rewards just for showing up. No, no, no. Listen, there's a battle, and you be, you are victorious because you are victor. You, you conquest. You defeat the enemy. Let me ask you right now. What battle are you facing right now? What battle are you looking at? What mountain are you looking at? What Goliath are you looking at? Uh, is it loneliness? Is it depression? Is it doubt? Is it a lack of faith? Is it unforgiveness? Is it bitterness? Is it immorality? Is it uh, areas of lust? What are you struggling with in your heart, in your mind? Are you in fear? Are you struggling with anxiety? Is it hard for you to love somebody? Is it hard for you to believe in God? Are you still offended uh, at President Trump? Are you still offended... Uh, at me? Are you still uh, experiencing going through things? So there's all of these different struggles and battles that people are facing and going through. And listen, 2020 has been a very hard, difficult year for everybody. But you're not meant to be stuck or under. You're not meant to be a loser. You're meant to overcome. You're meant to defeat the enemy. You're meant to go from glory to glory. And I'm trying to help you right now because if you Stand up like Matiyahu. If you take a stand like Matiyahu, like the Maccabees, then you will become the hammer of God and you will overthrow every wicked principality, idol, demon, wall. You will break through in your life. And I don't know about you, but I do not take loss for an answer. I have high expectations. I have high goals and a go for it. And God is saying, I'm breaking off the spirit of failure. God is saying, I'm breaking off the spirit of fear. In fact, many of you, uh, many of you, you've been struggling with failure and you've been fearing failure. That's why a lot of you have lost your angst or your motivation to keep going uh, forth and forward in life. But I break that in the name of Jesus. And God is saying, stop listening to the lies in your mind. Stop listening. Remember, the mind is the battlefield, is the battleground. Stop listening to the lies in your mind. Stop listening to the manipulation of the enemy of fear and anxiety. Remember, fear is false evidence appearing real. False evidence appearing real. It's not even there. Isn't it funny? People have panic attacks and they get afraid over things that they don't even see. People become afraid over things that they hear. That's what today I'm talking to you about victory. Victory in your mind. Victory in your heart. I declare victory in the name of Jesus. You're going to take back your temple. You're going to take back your joy. You're going to take back uh, your faith. You're going to take back your honor, your dignity. You're going to take back your finances, your clarity of your mind. You're going to take it back. Amen. Someone say, I'm taking it back. So I pray that you will be the Matiyahu and the Maccabees, a group, a company of people that were warriors that stood up against the grain and said, I'm willing to lay down my life for this. Amen. Let's go over to the book of Ephesians. I want to give you some keys and how you stay in victory. Okay. Are you with me today? Ephesians chapter 6. Ephesians chapter 6. I love this. Ephesians chapter 6 verse 10. Okay. Of course it talks about the full armor of God. Here uh, in verse 12. Let's read verse 12. Ephesians 6 12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood. But against 
rulers, against authorities, against powers of this world's darkness, and against the spiritual forces in the heavenly realms. Spiritual forces in the heavenly realms. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against rulers, against authorities, against powers, and against spiritual forces in the evil places. How do you win the war of the spiritual battle? How, how do you win the war of the spiritual battle? You can say, well, Pastor Ben, the full armor of God. We need to wear the helmet of salvation, the breastplate of righteousness, the belt of truth, yada, yada, yada. Okay. Well, let me tell you this. Before you put on the full armor of God, you need to go back. I love, I love this. People think spiritual warfare is only yielding the word of God is, you know, the helmet of salvation. No, no, no. Spiritual warfare is this. This is how you overcome spiritual warfare. And you close every door to, to the evil one, okay? Ephesians chapter 6, verse 1. Children, obey your parents in the Lord, for this is right. Oh. That's spiritual warfare. Obey your parents. Honor your elders. Come on, somebody. That's spiritual warfare. Your act of honoring your elders, authorities, parents, no matter how bad they are, how evil they are, when you honor your elders, there is a covering that comes in the spirit. Because most people do not honor their pastors. They don't honor prophets. They don't honor men and women of God. Because most people don't even honor their parents. So it cuts out the flow of blessings. It cuts out the flow of intimacy and the flow of power. You, you want to win in spiritual warfare? You honor. You honor. You honor. You honor. You honor. I'm telling you people of God. Um, when you honor spiritual elders, okay, when you honor spiritual elders, they become a layer of cover. It's like the circular thing. All right? It becomes a layer of covering around you. When you honor. That's a key. Okay? Before you even put on the full armor of God personally, you honor. Why am I, why am I telling you this? Because not a lot of people have victorious lives. If you want to live and walk in victory... Honor, honor those elders. Honor those leaders. Honor, honor, honor. I'm telling you. Stop being a victim. Honor, go low, bless, love. And then, and then number two. Our second key of overcoming spiritual battles and overcoming spiritual warfare. Number two. Here, I love this. Ephesians 6 verse... Uh, Ephesians 6, verse 5. Ephesians 6, verse 7. Excuse me. Serve with good will as to the Lord and not to men. Serve. When you serve, that's spiritual warfare. Honoring your elders and those around you and serving is spiritual warfare. Here's the thing. Many times we doubt our parents. We doubt our elders because of phony, fake news. There's so much false information until we doubt. So there's a lack of honor. But when the honor comes, when the, then there's a trust. When a trust is there, you've already won the battle for facts and information. Hear me now. The battle is in the mind. The battle is with relationships. The enemy comes to still kill and destroy. Okay. The enemy tries to come to divide your family, divide your friendships, divide the body of Christ. He say, she say, D say, they didn't say. The enemy tries to come and divide and destroy. But when there's honor, then there's a trust, which means a solid. And, and then the enemy cannot break apart. Most warfare comes 
by misunderstanding, confusion, uh, division. Okay, telling people of God, get healed, get whole, and tomorrow for day four, I'm going to talk about taking back your temple, and I'm going to believe for healing miracles in your body, and even from soul traumas. But way too many people do not live victoriously. They're still struggling with their trauma, still struggling with their past, still struggling with sin habits, still struggling with issues in their life, still that thought keeps tormenting you, that emotion keeps coming back up, that memory keeps following you. And most people, they're still living as slaves rather than masters. They're still living as losers rather than winners. Listen, you're victorious, people of God. Bila Matiyahu. Stand up and watch God begin to anoint you to win the battle in every area of your life. Of course, if you want to have victory in spiritual battle, of course, you know, the word, declare the word, pray in tongues, worship, sing, praise, because the frequency that's released out of your mouth uh, overcomes everything that's trying to come against you. Okay, Release angels, activate angels, send out angels, commission them. But when you honor and serve, two practical things, very practical things. I don't hear much people talk about that. But when you honor and when you serve, okay? And even when you sow, some say sow. When you financially sow, when you give, when you bless, it opens doors in the spirit. I'm telling you. You know, there's there's times where uh, I know that my financial seed that I sowed, it actually saved me. Um, it actually saved me from harm. It saved me from a trap or from a snare. Okay? When you sow a seed, okay, when you sow, it keeps your life, um, it keeps your life firm with the Lord. That's why the Jews, they always give. They're one of the biggest uh, people groups in charitable donations and philanthropy. Give to the Lord what belongs to the Lord. Let me give you some passages here as we're talking about victory. Amen. And some say victory. 1 Corinthians 15, 57. But thanks be to God who gives us victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. That word victory in Greek is nikao. Someone say nikao. Okay. That's where uh, we get the word Nike from, okay? Uh, so, thank God for we have victory through Jesus Christ, which means Nakao, which means Nike. Just do it, okay? So, there was a group uh, in that time called the Nicolaitans. I'm sure you've heard of that term in the book of Revelation. But the group of Nicolaitans, in a sense, they continue to have victory because of all the idolatry and the charlatan that they committed. Um, and so actually, in the book of Revelation, you see how Jesus hated the group of the Nicolaitans because they were gaining power through, uh, through witchcraft and through uh, different uh, you know, powers and mediums. But you gain power and victory through the Holy Spirit. You gain victory through Christ Jesus. Why? Because he already did it. We don't live for victory. We live from victory. We don't live for breakthrough. We live from breakthrough. Because Jesus did it. We live from the realm of victory. Amen. In every area of our lives. So that word nekao, victory... It means victory as in the results of conquest. Some say conquest. 
The result of Christ's conquest comes through faith, and they are transferred by grace to the regenerated believer. I love that. Because Jesus con is the conquest. He the, is the conquistador. You see, the conqueror, ultimate. He defeated death. He defeated Hades. Death cannot hold him down. So therefore, he has the keys of death and the keys of Hades. Come on, somebody. Are you ready for keys? I declare keys, keys, keys. So he holds keys in his hand because he overcame, uh, defeated death and Hades. Amen. I declare you will defeat the spirit of death. You will defeat the spirit of depression. So he has keys. So therefore it's now transferred to you. My gosh. I'm telling you. Snakes and scorpions, thorns and thistles are meant to be under your feet. Your enemy shall become a footstool under your feet. Says the Lord. My gosh, you better start stomping. Zabata, someone say amen. Let me read one or two more verses about victory here. Are you enjoying this? Romans eight thirty seven. No, but in all these things, we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. We are more than conquerors through him. Through him. Through him who loved us. We are more than conquerors. We're victorious. I love that. I love all of Romans 8. Come on, somebody. Let's go to the Old Testament, Deuteronomy 24. For the Lord your God is he who goes with you to fight for you against your enemies to give you the victory i declare god has gone before you he fights for you and he gives you the victory and every conversation every relationship every heartache every situation he's giving you the victory in the words of Stuart family victory is mine I love this passage here. Philippians 4.13. It's one of my life verses. Philippians 4.13. I can do all things through him who strengthens me. I can do all things. Amen. Let me ask you. If you're not going to win, why do you want to join the fight? Okay. If you're not going to win the Olympics, why does your nation put out the teams, the swimmer, the runner, uh, the shot put collar, the shot collar. If you're not going to win, why do you enter in? Just so you could be a part of it? Just so you could you feel like you're in a good social gathering? You just want to be part of something? I don't want to be a part of something. Okay? I don't want to be a part of something. I want to slay devils. I want to make history with Jesus. Some say victory. Some say victory is mine. In this season of Hanukkah, and even today on day three of the five days of Hanukkah miracles, God wants to give you victory in your mind, in your heart, in your emotions, in your relationships. Victory, victory, victory. Amen. I'm talking to you about a victorious mindset and a spirit of victory. Now, let me ask you this. This is the best part. If you, how, how can you have victory if you don't have a challenge? And once you have victory in the challenge, what happens? There's rewards. Some say rewards. Are you ready to receive rewards? My gosh. Are you ready to receive rewards? Only the victorious receive rewards. The spoils of war. Come on, somebody. Only the winner receives rewards. The spoils of war. Listen. Uh, usually in, in every competition, there's going to be a first place winner, a second place winner, and a third place winner, okay? The third place winner gets uh, the $5,000 prize. The second place winner gets uh, the $20,000 prize. But the first place winner gets a million dollars. Okay? You enter the battle 
Okay, we're already in a battle, so get get used to it. Get over it, okay? We're already in a battle, so stop losing. Just win. Just overcome by these principles, okay? You already got Christ in you, so that already puts you ahead of, of the world, of everybody else. So, you enter, you're already in a battle, okay? So, whether you stand up or whether you keep sitting down on the bleachers, as a pew sitter, that's up to you. But if you take a stand, you go against the grain, and you step up, you decree, you pray, you prophesy, you begin to move, then boom, I feel the Holy Ghost now. You begin to move, then boom, you win, you defeat, you cut up the head of Goliath, you defeat the Philistines, you defeat your enemy, then boom, what happens? You get their spoils, you take their possessions, you take their gold, their silver, you take their cows, their chickens, their donkeys, you take their land, you take everything that they have, and you have spoils of war. So no longer are you just this rinky-dink bandito group of Jews. But now you take back the whole land. You take the resources, oil, property, land. Come on, somebody. You take uh, the spoils of war, you know, women. You take children. You take homes, houses, property. You take it all. Why do you think? Why do you think America? <laughs> why do you think America has gone to war so many times all throughout the last uh, uh, century? Because it uses money, and you gain money. Okay. Whenever there's a war, whenever there's a battle, there's always rewards, spoils of war. Are you ready for spoils of war? Are you ready for the spoils? Come on, people of God. Are you ready for rewards? Are you ready for recompense? But you will not gain it unless, unless you're victorious. And remember, there's levels of rewards. Levels. Someone say levels. I don't know about you, but I want to have the gold medal. Not the silver. Not the bronze. Not the copper. Not the steel. Not the aluminum. I want to have gold. Someone said, I am a gold member. Yeah, baby. I apologize. I'm going so long yesterday and today. I'm just in it. Someone said, I am Nikao. I am Nike. I am victorious. Shut up. Exodus 12, 36. And the Lord had given the people favor. Someone say favor. In the sight of the Egyptians. So that they let them have their request. Thus they plundered the Egyptians. The Lord gave the people of God great favor in the sight of the Egyptians. So they let them have their request. They plundered the Egyptians. Are you ready to plunder your enemies? Come on, are you ready to plunder? You have to win though. You have to win the battle of the mind, the battle of the emotions, the battle of the spirit realm around you. You have to win. First Samuel 17, 53. The sons of Israel returned from chasing the Philistines and plundered their camp. Wow. Today, on this day three of five days of Hanukkah miracles, I want to tell you the greatest miracle is that you gain your sanity back. The greatest miracle is that you gain your authority back, your dignity back, your clarity back. Some of you, you've been struggling. Some of you, you've been discouraged. You've been confused. You've been depressed, feeling lonely. You feel like you're in a low of a low. You feel like you're in a pit. But remember, even Jesus went down to the pit to come out with the keys. He overcame. Some of you, you feel like you're in a battle. You feel like you're losing. Remember this. The greatest miracle is that you gain a sense of confidence and a sense of self, self-worth for yourself. Instead of self-loathing, you have great honor for your own self. You appreciate who you are in Christ. You don't do the lesser things. 
You don't give yourself away to anybody and everybody, but you have a respect for yourself. That's the greatest victory. Why? That's the greatest miracle. Why have, why have all these other miracles if you're still struggling on the inside? I speak wholeness. I speak blessing. I speak uh, purification. I speak refining. I speak re revival fire. I speak right now that God will give you breakthrough in your heart, in your mind, in your soul, in your emotions. That God will give you peace like never before. I speak shalom, which means wholeness, which means oneness, which means a betterment, which means that every area of your life has the peace and the oneness, the touch of God. Shalom, 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 shalom. Bam, 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 bam. On day three of Hanukkah miracles, I speak and I release today that you're having victory. You're having joy. You're gaining the spoils of the enemy. You're gaining rewards in the name of Jesus. So mata. Robo Soto, peace I leave with you, not as the world gives. I give you peace, peace, shalom, shamama, and the Spirit of God is coming now to break you free, to break you off, to set you free in the name of Jesus. I speak peace, shalom, in the name of Jesus over your heart, over your life. Amen, amen, amen. So I'm saying victory. Shadababa, I feel in, in this moment right now, God is giving you boldness. God is speaking to some of you right now that you need to do something that's uncomfortable. You need to step out. You need to step up. You need to tell somebody something. You need to confront them with love. You need to set healthy boundaries. You need to stop doing something. You need to start a business. You need to start something fresh. You need the boldness of God, victory. You shall overcome every fear and anxiety and every lie. I destroy it. In the name of Jesus, and you shall overcome. And I declare, even in this Hanukkah season, I, I declare right now that you're going to experience victories and miracles and breakthroughs like never before. And even as you cross over into 2021, you will do what you've been dreaming of. You will do what you've been wanting to do. In 2021, you will step out and you will begin to be the person that you've always wanted to be. Okay, it's not too late. 2021 is your year. I speak it in the name of Jesus over you, over your life. Expect Hanukkah miracles. Expect victory. But how will God give you the victory if you don't step up and step out? How can God give you the victory if you don't step out? I release it over you, Jesus. Victory. You are victorious. We are more than conquerors. In the name of Jesus. Bang, 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 bang. Bam, 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 bam. Fire, fire. I feel a shift. I feel a breakthrough. Some of you, some word curses, some traumas, some lies that you've been sort of, it's breaking off right now. Heaviness is breaking off right now. Doom and gloom. Depression is breaking off right now. Who says you can't do it? Who says you can't? Shakarabo so kamande. In the name of Jesus. Fire of God. The fire of God. Mandaridis karabruska. Are you ready for the spoils of war? Ready for the spoils of war. God bless the people of God. Thanks for joining me today. This is Pastor Ben. We're day three of five days of Hanukkah miracles. I want you to comment below what spoke to you, what ministered to you, what are you experiencing, what's going on right now. I want you to comment below. I'd love to hear your thoughts, feedback. Tomorrow is day four of five days of Hanukkah miracles. I'm excited to talk to you about taking back your temple. And uh, tomorrow I'm believing uh, for physical healing miracles in your body, okay? Because your body is the temple of the Lord. So if you need a healing miracle in your body, I want you to join, tune in uh, tomorrow specifically, okay? Because uh, I'm going to minister healing into your temple tomorrow. Amen? And Friday, I'm actually uh, flying. Uh, so Friday, uh, I'm not going to do 10 a.m., but I'm going to do 5 p.m. PST. And I'm going to prophesy and minister over every single person who comes on. It's going to be great. Okay. This is Pastor Ben. God bless you. Aloha from Hawaii. I'm going to go jump in the water now, go snorkeling. And I'll see you tomorrow.